<laughs> no, I don't look out. You don't have your camera, that's fine. So, um, you're looking into Islam at the moment, right? Um, what? Where, where are you coming from? What's your background? Tell me a bit about yourself. I'm a Christian from a Christian family, but uh, I don't feel like that. We never go to church. Like, can, uh, I, can I give you, because what happens is, the audio, I'm going to capture. My English is so bad. Definitely, that's right. Um, and then that's like what you said? Yeah, yeah I come from a Christian family. My family is Christian, I'm Christian. But we never go to church, we never go to church. We never pray every day. And uh, I went to Morocco, that's all right. I heard the... Uh, the call to prayer. Azan, yeah. Yeah, Azan. And I felt something like, and then I started talking about Islam, I started YouTube videos, and I started that. So you, you said your family's Christian, you're Christian. What yeah. does it mean to be a Christian? Christian, the name of Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God. Alright, so now, uh, let me. He doesn't want to be in the camera now. Uh, He's the son of God. So what does that mean to you? Do you, believe, do you believe God has children? Do you believe God has brothers and sisters? Do you believe God will have nieces and nephews? I don't believe that. That's why I'm searching about this life. So it's not to raise that. God is only one. Yes. Exactly. Um, I'm going to give you a four-line definition of God. Right? This is in the Quran, chapter 112. Yeah? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمر لم يلد ولم يولد ولم نقل له كفوا أحد تكلمت عن قل هو الله أحد سي الله is uniquely one الله السمر الله is self-sustaining eternity ولم نقل له كفوا أحد إذا لم يلد ولم يولد لم يلد ولم يولد he did not begin, nor was he begotten. There's nothing comparable to God. How do you feel about this definition? Do you believe Allah is uniquely one? Yeah. Allah is not in need of anyone or anything. Yeah. Allah is self-sustaining. Yeah. Eternal. Yeah. He did not begin, nor was he begotten. God wasn't born, nor does he have children. Yeah. And there's nothing comparable to God. So, if this is the belief in God you have, uh, the second part of it would be important for you to clarify. Do you know much about the Prophet Muhammad? I don't know very much about him. What do you know about that? Uh, so, the angel got you a couple of them. Yes. And uh, the angel told you that one. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. So, he's a man who didn't know how to read or write. Now, uh, he's got the revealed a book, the Quran, that's been translated in all languages in the world, it's been preserved to this day. It's the fastest religion, fastest running religion in the world. Um, this man who talked uh, about human rights, who talked about rights of women, uh, he said, no white man is better than a black man. No Arab is better than a non-Arab. Here's an Arab saying this 1400 years ago. And he's saying, the only thing that separates you uh, is your belief in your heart of God. So right now, it's not about rich people, Arab, non-poor people. Uh, it's about what's your connection with God. And that is what makes somebody uh, define the quality of a person. So my question to yourself is, you have the belief, the correct belief of God, of Allah. Yeah. Um, there's nothing about the Prophet Muhammad you would disagree with. Do you know much about the Quran? I just started reading something on the internet. But my issue I have two dogs. Because I have read about Muhammad. But when I was sent the Quran to him, he was feeling so bad and he uh, was about to take part. And I think that, how can you feel like that? God said he's a good one. He's a good one. Why you think that? Because for me, that shows the humanity of the problem he's been upon him. There's a difference between being overwhelmed, uh, 
and actually attempting to. Yeah. Uh, being so overwhelmed that it's like you just want it all to end, you, you feel the pressure. Because yeah. even when the initial revelation of the Quran came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? uh, he actually came shivering scared to his wife. Yeah. Uh, saying, balloon is in the cover Because like, he was so worried through the ordeal of his experience, like his the angel, his revelation, he's always losing his mind. Yeah. And then he went on a journey with his wife, Khadija, like to two scholars, two people of the time, where actually they said that, look, uh, what you're saying to me makes me believe this was followed at the time that this is a prophet sent by God. So he's having information verified to him at the beginning stages. And thereafter, um, there was someone who, again, look at his lifestyle. He taught us how to be men, how to lead a country, how to lead an army. How to treat your wife, how to groom yourself. Yeah. When we come out of the bathroom, how to wash up, how to cut our nails. And this is a complete way of life. And this is further more signs that this is not somebody making it up, this is from God. Even when, I don't know, you haven't probably got to this stage of your studying, there was a point where the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu peace be upon him, he had a son. Yeah. And he passed away about 18 months. And at that point, there was a total eclipse, solar eclipse. Yeah. Uh, and then this is how honest the Prophet Muhammad was. He was saying that, uh, and the believers are that, look, even the sun is mourning the death of the messenger, the sun. But he said that, no, this isn't uh, the moon, the sun and the moon, loose translation in this meaning, doesn't mourn the death of anyone's children. This would have been a perfect time for this honest man to actually affirm that look, um, look, this is a sign of God. Yeah. But I'm just trying to show that the quality of uh, the caliber of the Prophet Muhammad is one his knowledge, his faith increased over time. I don't want to use the word increase, but his faith was just like he's the perfect example to mankind. Yeah. And the more you study his life, the more you see this. So, what you've come across, I'm going to be honest with you, is through your general search on Google, you're finding um, a lot of um, Islamophobic websites, yeah, yeah, pages, yeah, yeah. and then they want to make this point. And I'm like, is this the best you have? No, not you, I'm saying to them. Oh, okay, okay. Is this the best you have? Yeah. Out of all your years of trying to make Islam look bad, this is the best you've got. You know what I'm saying? So this, this, this makes my faith stronger. And this is this is why I'm here. Putting myself in the Anyone got any questions? Talking about comparative religion? Um, anyone trying to do it? And they haven't got nothing. You know what I'm So the way I look at it is. The Prophet Muhammad was Harakusen man. He was a man chosen amongst men as a perfect example. And this is someone I and you can imitate and be like, and I have, we have no excuse. He's a man. If God sent an angel, I can't do that. It's an angel. You understand? If God sent God, <laughs> then it's like, well, am I trying to imitate God? I'm going to be like God. Obviously, God is. How can you how can you know that there is not something to have to have but to hear the law? The law maybe is in a lower stage and you want to scam as if it's saying it is for I know it's a stupid question, but no 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 um, it's a fine question. Right? I think that this is super important. Uh, now, apart from... So can I say that uh, the uh, Hindus, they say that uh, there are many gods, and there is one with uh, Shiva, the, the real god. And then created uh, a lot of uh, other gods, and they came to be the only one god. So how can you have the power of this kind of thing? I'm going to build on the point I've just made. 
the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a man yeah, who is chosen by God to be he's the truthful. Yeah. Now, God is better than the creation. Yeah. God is more honest. So, if you've got practical examples of the Prophet Muhammad being honest, being trusted by his community, yeah, even when he, people, the non Muslims, even before Islam came to him, because he got prophethood at the age of 40 years old, yeah, and he had a reputation of being the trustworthy, the upright, the person who everyone trusts with. You know, now we have banks. Before we didn't have banks, so what would end up happening is um, you would leave your money and your belongings with someone you trust, and that person was the problem. So now, if Allah has chosen a man, Allah is free of these examples. Allah is more honest, Allah is um, more worthy of worship. So it's like, you know, you ask the question, right? if there's something more mightier than God. Sorry. More mightier than Allah, and I would have been is that Allah's trying to be misleading or whatever. But the question arises if who created that mighty God above Allah? Who created that mighty God that created that mighty God that created that mighty God above Allah? So, this, exactly. Yeah. So, there's nothing above Allah because Allah wasn't created by anything. Because yeah. Allah doesn't need anything, so Allah was always there. Oh my so if uh, something created Allah, if something was above Allah, then we wouldn't worship Allah. I wouldn't be loved. Allah doesn't deserve to be worshipped. Yeah. By definition, now Islam, and you know what I'm talking about? Allah, uh, you know, having created. Uh, uh, Allah being the most high. Yeah. This is revelation from 1400 years ago. Yeah. Now we've got science to kind of understand these theories about infinite, infinite recourse and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, you create this, you create that, you create that. Yeah. So I'm saying to you that Allah Almighty uh, doesn't have a creator, there's nothing above Allah. Then, we wouldn't be worshipping Allah. Allah wouldn't deserve to be worshipping Allah. Am I making sense? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So don't. The thing is, you're someone who's looking into Islam. All questions are welcome. Yeah. I don't want you to feel embarrassed or ask any questions or feel silly. And like I said, this is just through us filming this, other people will be learning as well. Because you think, oh, this is a question, it's silly. I can imagine there's going to be another 20, 100, 200, 3,000 people who have got the same question. Do you have any other questions? Yes, I will. There you go, 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 go. Yes, the, for example, if there was a, this world, if there was just a Judaism, uh, Islam, and Islam, I would believe that Islam is the world. Say that again, sorry, I'm getting distracted by what's happening behind us. I'll put it say that. If there was the only the, the, the Judaism, Islam, and Islam, I would believe in Islam, because it's not the real world in this world. But I also that I think that it's uh, why it is uh, For example, I, uh, I read about Islam that there are a lot of, uh, uh, like I said, a lot of uh, scientists uh, Firstly, what, what miracles are in the Veda? Because everyone claims to have miracles, right? Firstly, it's not going to be at the same caliber of the Quran. For example, do you think that Vedas are sent from uh, God or just human religion? I think... I'm not qualified to have a video. Yeah? Um, I'm going to think about scholarship and I'm going to think about what Islam says about it. Yeah? Um, the Islamic perspective is Allah sent over uh, 135,000 prophets. Now, who are these prophets? I'm going to have to take this camera so it doesn't belong to me. Um, so, from that perspective, there's probably elements that was inspired. Yeah. However, fully, without a shadow of how, I can say the Vedas and the Hindus' belief is 
and complete uh, process. Because whenever anything man-made goes into it, there's corruption. In a sense, the Islamic position is important. Right? Um, we believe in the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, right? and the scripture that was revealed to them. We call it the Injil, the Torah. Now, we don't call it the Bible. The Bible, we don't believe, is the book, the scripture that was revealed to Jesus. Yeah. Because there's elements in Christianity, if it doesn't contradict Islam, uh, and he agrees with Islam, we will accept it. Yeah. Anything that contradicts Islam, we will reject it. Yeah. And anything that doesn't uh, contradict or agree with it, then it's fine. We, we won't have an opinion on it. You know because you can throw which are the prophets that Allah sent. It's like 125,000. So now, in the Bhagavad Gita and the scriptures that they're in, if there's anything it says that doesn't contradict the Quran, I'll take it. Anything that contradicts the Quran, I'll reject it. Because the Quran is the perfect, unchanged word of God. The Quran claims to be from God. The Quran, Allah in the Quran says Allah is going to preserve the book. Now, this is a very simple way of you disproving Islam to be the truth. Or anyone. Yeah, by saying, oh, there's a mistake in the Quran, or hasn't been preserved. Even, there isn't. Like, even a lot of non Muslims academics will, will affirm that the Quran is the only scripture that has been preserved. Yeah? And even you can be only independent research, we have a carbon dated Quran in a university in Birmingham. Yeah? We have um, Qurans in a museum in. Turkey and in a university in Cairo. Yeah? No one else can make these claims. Other scriptures don't make this claim. So for me, I don't need to look into other religions to see the truth because I have the truth in Islam. Yeah? Like when I was like earlier on when I was born and brought up in this country, like because Islam wasn't presented to me correctly, I had to look into other faiths, look into to verify Islam. And now I've verified it, does it make sense? Because I had a very cultural Islam given to me. Because you have to remember, I'm second generation in this country. No, I'm not. I'm first generation in this country. So when my parents came into this country, they had Islam which they learned from their native countries. And then they're giving me that teaching. And I'm like, um, originally, my parents are from Bangladesh. So I was like, it's very cultural. And I'm like, wait, this doesn't settle. I, don't, I can't really agree with this. It doesn't make sense. But then I realized it's not Islam that doesn't make sense. It's what was taught to me about Islam through my parents. And when I looked into Islam um, with a critical thinking academic mind, I'm like, wait, wow, this is pure, this is from God, this is preserved, yes. prophecies have come true, and even about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, it talks about, like, we, we accept it, like, it makes sense. So what other questions you have to ask? Last question. Yeah. Uh, Second last question. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Allah, so Allah wanted to show all the world the last word, the last message. Yep. Uh, so why he sent that just in um, Arabia? Why he didn't send one prophet in uh, all the world? Like for example, now we have technology and uh, all people from all the world can become of Islam. But before, let's say that we don't have technology, how can people from Australia, people from America know about Islam? Good question. The fact of the matter is going to be better for me. If I was wrong, <laughs> send a prophet in every country. Like, Why? To give the opportunity to all people. No, no, no. You, you have to do in, in like, uh, you're from Italy, right? Yeah. There's a Quran in Italian. What's yes, up, you've been reading it. The fact of the matter is, uh, what Islam can't do is a simple message. Okay? And no person is going to go hellfire unless they rejected the truth. If the truth hasn't come to them, then they're not liable. Yeah. Now, 
I think they, Allah chose to reveal the Quran in Arabia, in Arabic, because Allah knows best. <laughs> because it's the, um, it's the best way to preserve the language, I mean the message. Um, it's the best way to actually show its miracle. So the Arabic language is able to communicate the message we need right now. The Quran was revealed 1400 years ago. It's as relevant now as it was then, and it's going to be as relevant 1400 years from now. Yeah. And I think you can only do that with the Arabic language. Yeah. And one of the miracles of the Quran. Is, is linguistic miracle. So there's elements of the Quran where uh, it will actually help you to understand different subjects and um, help you to kind of the linguistic miracles. What's the best way to explain it? It's, it's, because Arabic language has more meaning, maybe. More, uh, more meaning, more... A word means a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things. It, uh, the linguistic miracles, I'm just trying to figure out how to kind of explain it. Uh, just in the way it's written, just the way uh, the words are used in that particular order. Um, the Quran, it was revealed over 23 years. Yeah. It wasn't like here, the book just dropped from the sky. Yeah. It was linguistic. And then now we've got it in written form. When you look at how it's written and how uh, the words are put in a specific order, how many times, uh, like for example, uh, men and women, how many times those words are used? It's exactly the same. When it's talking about uh, the Jews and they're talking about them being the middle nation. Yeah. Um, it's mentioned in the chapter 2, that's got 186 verses, and it's in the middle of that chapter. Yeah. St st stuff like that. So that's the linguistic miracle. Um, how words kind of rotate. It's, it's, it's hard for me to explain it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's profound, isn't it? It's, it's quite mind blowing. So. If, if, when Allah chose to reveal it in the Arabic language, potentially that's one of the motivations. Because honestly speaking, I don't know. Allah knows this, God knows why. Um, but when you have it in different countries, it's not going to prevent people from looking into Islam because it's accessible. Um, I have a Quran in my house which I've actually given to people, uh, a person, excuse me, in Chinese. Yeah, so you've got to translate, so there's, there's no excuse. And the miracle of it is how did the Quran be preserved from in Arabic? Yeah. Like you're saying, the different meanings of it. Um, it talks about embryology, which I'm sure you've heard yeah. And it talks about the word alaka. Yeah. The word alaka has got three different meanings to it. Yeah. Alaka. Yeah. Something that clings, something that hangs. A blood clot. Yeah. Uh, so then you find that look, all of these meanings uh, apply to the embryo and the context of the Quran that's talking about embryology and so on and so forth. Yeah. And that's the miracle of it. So it feels like, oh, it's one out of three. It's all three and it, it evolves as our knowledge of science evolves. Yeah. So then it's like, oh, thank you, what's happening? And then you say, oh, that's what it's talking about. Or when it's talking about this, when it talks about like a leech like. But again, this, this is a length conversation. I'm happy to have it with you in more detail another day. Uh, what other questions do you have? I'm done. Huh? Are you done, yeah? Yes, I will do it. How, how do you feel about my answers? Very nice, because uh, I had a bit mess now. It's, yeah. It's clear. Yeah. Yeah. So, my question to you now. I have a question for you. <laughs> What's stopping you now from becoming a Muslim? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> What's stopping you? I don't know. Maybe I need to study a little more. They want to what, what do you need to study? Because I've had this conversation right, with people and I've asked them. I've had people who become Muslim through this conversation. I've had people who become who wasn't ready to become Muslim. They're done on research. And then I see them one year later. 
then I see them um, two years later and they're studying, studying, studying and then they become Muslim. So what do you need to study? What, what is it that you need to know to kind of know that you're, you're believing the truth? First of all, I want to read the whole Quran. Yeah. Then, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it because now I can't be a Muslim now because I don't feel like it. I still don't feel it. I would not be, how can I say it? I would not have the passion to pray every day and do everything because I didn't read really like the Quran. So, first of all, I want to finish the Do you know about the five pillars in Islam? Can I, can, I, can I get you to hold this? Yes. Okay. Look at that. My umbrella is no longer raining. So five people are praying, going to the Mecca, doing yep. charity. Yep. And, uh, I don't know the reason. Yeah. I'm going to say in order to help me remember. Right? Okay. So the first is belief, shahada. Yeah? Um, the testimony of belief. Then it's praying five times a day. Yeah? Then it's giving charity, zakat. Yeah, that charity is 2.5 percent of your annual wealth that you haven't spent in one calendar year, and you give it to charity. It's basically a tax for the rich to give to the poor. Yeah, you know in Islam, you can research into this. We eradicated poverty through giving this annual charity. So you know about this. Yeah, there was no more poor people. In Islam, like everyone's like, oh, if God is true, then why is there poor people and all this suffering? Like, well, that's because we're not following the commandments of God. Yeah. And if we did, you realize that all of the problems we have will be God. Because yeah. Islam is a practical religion that gives us solution. Yeah. So that's the card. We've got uh, fasting coming up. Fasting is when you're uh, uh, not able to eat any food between sunrise until sunset, and you do it for a 30 day period. Yeah? If you're too old, you don't do it. You don't need to. If you're too young, you don't need to. If you're sick, you don't need to. If you're traveling, you don't need to do it. Yeah. 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 Even women who are on the period. Yeah. Because it's difficult to for them, they're losing blood, even they don't have to pass on that period. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the last time you said it, um, the Holy Pilgrim. Yeah. Um, just breaking it down. Um, Islam, like when you've got the faith, yeah, the testimony, the belief in the heart, which you have, yeah, yeah, the testimony of the tongue, which you uh, basically you admit when you say it, you affirm it, you affirm it, and then actions of the lips. Yeah, which is, look, when you have the right belief, it should impact how you behave, how you interact with people. Because uh, I know now, if I'm good to you, I'm going to get rewarded by God. If I'm bad to you, I'm going to get punished by God. Praying five times a day, that will stop you from actually falling into sin or doing sinful behavior. It's like praying five times a day. When you're going to sin, you wake up, you pray. Uh, in the afternoon, you pray. Yeah. Uh, midday you pray, in the evening you pray, in the night you pray. Oh, the you pray. Thank you. That's the word, key word, connection with God. Yeah. And then you've got the zakat, which is a practical thing, because the fasting. When you look into a fasting, you say, it's, a, it's miraculous. You know, fasting non-stop for 30 days. It actually works as a detox. I read about this. I did it for one week, but that's what You're allowed to eat. Um, so, in the first thing in the morning, uh, in the morning, uh, before sunset, no, yeah, before sunrise, you're allowed to eat. Yeah, and after sunset. And you'll find that it has like a profound uh, benefit for your body. And you can the Prophet Muhammad feed your body. We used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. And now, science is showing that it's good to do intermittent fasting twice a week. And they recommend Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. So, I'm saying, why delay something that's good for you? Right now, can you guarantee me that you're not going to die before you finish reading the whole book? Are you sure? Guarantee it. You guarantee it, go on. Yeah, I can, but yeah, it's possible. Maybe I can die later from... <laughs> Even myself, yeah, like I said.
I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to finish my next sentence without something happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So why? I'm just thinking in my mind that I want to read first of all all the, all the books. Why don't you know what I am? I'm calling. I've told you what you're calling. The five pillars. No, no, real two. No, it's all right. I just want to have a complete vision. Are you going to go abroad to learn? Are you going to go abroad to study? Are you going to learn Arabic? Why not? If you want to know the full, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. The fact of the matter is, I'm going to ask you some questions. If you disagree with me, stop. Yeah. Or tell me, God is one. Yes. God sent prophets and messengers. I agree. Yeah. God sent a perfect book, which is the Quran. Yes. Yeah. The Quran is perfectly preserved. The Quran gives you guidance. Yeah. The rules Allah has given, yeah. the five pillars, is good. Good, because you said fasting is good. Yes, yes, yes. In a sense, no, giving zakat is good. Yeah. Giving charity is good. So why delay yes, it? I, I just don't feel it again in my heart. It's still in my heart. You know. First, I don't know why. It's my mind. <laughs> How long have you been looking into Islam for? Uh, one month. One month. I'm very surprised there. You know, I speak to people. You know, I was telling you about this person who waited to be a Muslim. Yes. Yeah. They said they're going to look into it. You know, they knew how to pray. Yes, they knew how to pray. Really? Yeah. He was not a Muslim. He wasn't a Muslim. And they still wanted to look into it. And then I spoke to them and they had like a little booklet that they've written of no in regards to the prophets and stuff. I'm like, you're like a mini scholar. Yeah. And I'm like, what's stopping you? So there are some people like right now you've looked into it for a month. Like I've spoken to people who have looked into it less than a month and you know who are interested in praying stuff like that. Because it's spirituality as well, does it make sense? Because it's food for the soul. Yeah, it's something I had someone become Muslim in my house on my sofa. He's a Christian and when I told him Muslims pray five times a day, he said to me that look, uh, I need that. As soon as I said, you have to be, you pray five times a day, yeah, because I want to become Muslim. And the worst thing is, you're going to meet a lot of born Muslims who find it difficult to pray. Have you met Muslims? Uh, uh, yes, I have uh, I ask them questions. And, uh, they make excuses about praying. Do they pray five times a day? Uh, not all. <laughs> yeah, do they drink? So, yes, some of them. So, these are elements, and by the way, as someone who is newly become a Muslim, the aim for you is to stop the bad habits. Yeah. Not in, as soon as you can, but the advice I give to a lot of people in your situation is increase the good habits. Does that make sense? So then you suddenly realize that look, there are things you want to do more. Excuse me. Um, the more you look into it. Does that make sense? Um, I can imagine. Like, you know, Islam, there's nothing that's been forbidden in the Quran which is good for you. I'm going to say that again. Dramatic. There's nothing which is forbidden which is good for you. And there's nothing which is, um, um, which is bad for you which is being permitted. Now, there are some things you will be like, oh, but I enjoy doing this. Why can't I do that? Long term will make you unhappy. Yeah. Um, I'm someone who's grown for Islam. When I was younger, I'm like, man, why is this haram? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? As I got older, I'm like, alhamdulillah. If I fell into this sin, if I did that, it would be made like problematic for me. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> What's stopping you from doing the good now, practically doing what you need to do through your own faith, yeah, learning how to pray, looking into the Quran, reading the Quran, fasting. The thing is, if you don't become Muslim now, yeah, and you die, then your destination is going to be somewhere very warm, yeah, and you're not going to have fun. Not yeah. for me. <laughs> it's real too, because the fact of the matter is, what's stopping you right now is arrogance. Yeah. It's, oh, um, I need to verify with my intelligence is if Islam is correct. What happened to you falling on your knees and saying, oh God, oh Allah, the one who created me, the one who made me, uh, show me the truth. Oh, oh God, in increase my intelligence. Yeah. You know, atheism is very unnatural. 
not to believe in God is very unnatural. But one of my evidences for this is there's never an atheist on a sinking ship. Yeah. As soon as there's a storm, there's a problem, suddenly they start believing. Oh God, get me out of this situation. I'm never going to be bad. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You know that? What you said is the truth. Because Islam brings about the fitra, the natural inclination to God. We naturally believe in one God. Yeah. People believe in many gods, their fitna has been corrupted. Yeah. People do evil acts, their fitna has been corrupted. Yeah. Being good, being honest, believing in one God, wanting to worship God, this is natural, this is fitna. This is innate how God has created us. Yeah. So that's why naturally you. Well, what's going to be ahead? No, nothing, I'm just listening. Just... <laughs> now go on, go on. No, I'm just thinking about. I just said, I don't know, I just put it to 100%. Yeah. Then tell me, um, Saturday night, how much time you got? We're going to be here all day. Into your 100%. Because at the moment, all your questions have been answered. Yeah. Yeah. So you tell me. I don't even feel like Christian. Huh? I don't even feel like a Christian. I know you don't feel like Christian, yeah? But you didn't, you wasn't on the camera. But when like, you said it, I could see it's like. I'm not even a Christian, why am I calling myself a Christian? Yes. I can see it, that's how you feel. That's because yeah. I was born in that. Exactly, there's a little bit of loyalty, but I'm saying your loyalty needs to be with God. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah? So, now, in this situation, what we're going to do is the difference between seeing the finishing line and crossing the finishing line. Yeah? So, as a person who's looking for God, I wouldn't even call you a Christian. Yeah. As someone is looking for God, you rejected all the falsehood in Christianity. You know, if you went to the Christian faith now, church, with the belief you have, they'll kick you out. You wouldn't be welcome. With everything you told me now, Muslims will welcome your open hand. Yeah. How did you call you my brother? You've got the faith, the belief of a Muslim, but have you got the courage that you admit to? Have you got the courage to do what you need to do? Because the fact of the matter is, right? everything in Islam, you've agreed with. Yeah? Everything in Islam you said is good for you, so why are you stopping yourself from doing the good? Do the good, do the good, and look into it. Because if there's anything I've said that you disagree with, or you find a problem with and which you're not, you can leave it. But I think, why delay the good? Like that. Ramadan is coming, you could start it as a Muslim. So I said, right now, how would your life change if you become a Muslim right now? No. <laughs> My family may be worth on me. <laughs> That's how people see me. Uh, yeah. like that, I don't care. I suggest, and I say it's all non-Muslim. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? I'm 25. 25. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I say give this advice to all new Muslims, right? Have that conversation with your family when you're ready. Right now, once you become Muslim, you gain knowledge. Once you gain knowledge, then it's your duty to portray that knowledge to your family. That's why I also want to first of all learn a lot about it and read the whole Quran. Practically do it. For you to read the whole Quran, how long are we going to take you? In one month. In one month. No, 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 You've been looking into this for one month. How much of the Quran have you read? Nothing, because I just... I rest my case. No, 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 no. So, imagine... Dr. Zakenak, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. I want to buy a Quran. Uh, I'm going to give you a Quran. Oh, you have? Yeah. Okay. Free Quran, my friend. <laughs> You're a big sign for it. Yeah? <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. what if you spend another 12 months like this? Month you spend? Oh, man. Oh, 12 months. Oh, man. Number one year, two years, three years. Now, yeah, I'm looking into it. So, I would say... Because I'm like a person who can, who can jump in a choice without... Uh, Involved in information. Without reading information. 
Yeah. Just the riddle. You're going to read the whole Quran and then let me tell you a secret. On the last page, the third line, it, says, no more on the <laughs> it, it tells you to drink the baby's blood or something. No, it doesn't say this. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, you read all of it, and then that, that's it, the last line. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm not thinking this story because I know it was really a long time ago. Also, the things about people complaining about girls and hijab, I deal with that. I'm not like, no hijab. Because I understand that it was really in an uh, ancient age. I will not look at this little thing and say, oh, this is... Uh, but you can look at those things. Yeah, I see that in the Think about that. Do you know, I don't know about it, but you know in this country, um, in this country, if you walked around just wearing shoes, nothing will happen to you. If a woman walked around wearing just shoes, she would get arrested for public indecency. So even this country knows women have to wear more clothes than men. And I'm saying Allah knows better than the creation how much to wear. Yeah, I do with that. I do. I can tell you stories where uh, there was this lady, she was covered head to toe. Yeah. Uh, another woman came to salam her. She goes, What does that mean? She goes, Are you not Muslim? She goes, No. She was covered head, head to toe. Oh, you can see her eyes. And she's not even a Muslim. She goes, Oh, no, I like you because I don't get harassed. And I think this was in Italy or Spain or somewhere. There's yeah, so one of you being country. So, at this stage, what Allah has revealed, you're not a woman, you may not understand what it is. But as you get older, you realize that there is a practical purpose in this. Wouldn't you say? Would you rather your woman run with. I've met a lot of people who have gone through journey in the European country. I've known them many ways. And one sister, I've been with Croatia. Okay, don't come. She was four years before. Before she got married to a Muslim guy, she became Muslim. And she was praying and she was covered up in Croatia. And then she mentioned to the women like, oh, like bikinis and wearing this kind of How foreign that culture is. And what? Can you imagine being born in the West and embracing Islam and wanting to actually see the rules of that Allah has taught. And it's it just fascinating because when I'm here giving da'wah, having conversations, I hear all these different different schools. And you're going to be one of those stories I'm going to tell someone one day as well. Yeah? Now this guy is watching Dr. Zakanak for one month, watching YouTube, and then he said he wants to read all of the Quran. <laughs> he told me he's going to read 10 pages a day over two months. Yeah. Over, yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to answer this one more time. Yeah. And then I'm not going to carry on to the virus, right? Because do you know about the blessings of the month of Ramadan? The month of Ramadan is basically when your good deeds get multiplied. And this is the month where the Quran was revealed. It's a very blessed month. It's a holy month for Muslims. When we do the spiritual actions of fasting. When you become Muslim, you will notice that in the mosque, you're going to pray. You're going to have the Imam who's leading the prayer. And he's going to be reciting in this month the whole Quran from the memory. And if he makes one mistake, you've got another role behind it of people who are happy, people who memorize the Quran, word for word, letter for letter, dot for dot, who correct it. He wrote kids as young as seven who memorized it. There's over 6,000 verses. Um, again, there was one lady who was telling me a story. No, it was a lady who was a teacher in a school uh, that he teaches in Islamic school. A woman went there, new Muslim, she became Muslim at the age of 18. And she had the intention of memorizing books and acts. 8 0. And then it took her five years to memorize it by heart. And then she passed away. Which is good because we see that as 
Like the rewards you get every verse you memorize, the ranks in paradise is great. So, the way I look at it is, um, I'm in a bit of a rush for you to become Muslim now because you're going to enjoy the experience of fasting, of being around the brother, brotherhood. Um, and, and you work at the moment. You study? I'm working in the job. In Italy? What brings you here? Well, uh, not holy oh, is it? Yes, yes. oh, is it? Yeah, oh my gosh, what's going on? Why are you talking in my mind? I'm thinking, me and him, we're going to do start together, we're going to go Mars. So you're telling me I have to go Italy to experience that with you, yeah? yeah. How, how are the Muslims in Italy? Italy, mostly are Moroccans from Morocco. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It depends. Women are good Muslims. The Kudawa, the men just haram. Haram, haram, haram. Even the Moroccans. Yeah. Yeah. I really like Moroccans. I feel like they're kind of religious. I guess maybe the younger generation. So, is there a mosque near where you live in Italy? Huh? Is there a mosque in Italy near where you live? No, there is not. Italy is there. Because you know there is Vatican there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't try to build the mosque. It's not a country. It's not a country. I don't think it's Islamophobia. It's probably not... They just don't want to let the business. So there's no mosque in Italy? No, I think so. My city, no. Maybe in Rome, there is one. Really? So you're going to... It's going to be difficult, man. But then you've got Moroccan friends. Yeah. When, when's your next plan to go to Morocco? I think in September. September? Yeah. Uh, Maybe we'll take Shahad Shahad away. <laughs> <laughs> My point is that you made of <laughs> you know, I was going to say, like, it's going to be a very scary plane trip because you're going to be there scared every time there's a little bit of storm. So it says, at least if you take Shahad now, you can relax and not run. You know what I mean? Everything is calm. Don't do anything that's. I don't, I don't think it will be complete to take it now. I don't know. I don't know what's If I do know it, it will not be from my heart. I know this. That's why. How? You have. There's nothing that I've said that you disbelieve in. Like, I've I got a lot of stories. So, this one guy. Uh, I know both of them. I know two brothers. The younger brother became Muslim. Okay. And he's there giving, uh, inviting his brother to Islam. He spent three years doing this. Every time he spoke, there was another guy with him. By the end of it, the guy who was with him became Muslim. Oh, really? <laughs> and the other brother became, they both became Muslim. They came to my house to eat and stuff like that. And he told me that, look, I knew Islam was a Jew. When my brother was telling me, I knew. The only thing that stopped me, I didn't want to make the changes. I kind of like became Muslim, he got married to him. He actually was giving, inviting someone to Islam, a girl, woman, who worked in a bank. She became Muslim, um, she stopped working in a bank, they got married, they got a kid. I think mean, he went, um, we lost um, contact, unfortunately. But he went to Medina, studying, stuff like that. So, you know, I know you're talking about this feeling that's going to... Uh, and you want to become Muslim, right? How do you know? Honestly, I don't know. Because my point is, if you disagreed with something, and you said you, your hesitation came from, I need this clarified, I need to understand this. You know you answered that, I don't need to accept that answer. I need to research this. Because your researching is not to research it, to study it. Because there's nothing, you're not in doubt of the Quran's preservation or the Quran. You just want to read it. So, what is your notation? What is that thing? How would you know what that thing is? Look, right now, in fact, can you see that guy there? Yeah. yeah look, he's preparing to pray. Yeah. yeah. You know, Moses, when he spoke to God, he done evolution, he washed himself. Yeah. Moses, he took off his shoes to pray. Um, when you come, of course. You don't have water, you have to do it again. Look, look, you already have knowledge. Yeah? You have knowledge. Surah 6. Close, close, close. Surah 5. You're close, close.
But it's good knowledge. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, you're even calling it Sula. I just, I just want to, <laughs> to read it all. Uh, see, my cameraman is coming now. He's like, look, how much more battery am I going to waste on this, brother? You have become Muslim or I'll switch off the camera. So go on. Like I said, this is going to be the last time. Give me a good reason why you're not going to become Muslim. I don't tell you reason. Yeah? Because if, if, if you want to guarantee, how are you going to go? Train, bus, walking. Just be careful you don't fall. No lightning. Nothing falls on top of you. No double-decker bus comes to you. Anytime death can arrive. Anytime. Death can come at any time. Look, look at this. Multi-faith. Why? I'm scared if I become, I don't want to become a Muslim now and start reading all Quran and doing my research. And then maybe something else stops me. Like what? And I said, I don't know because I didn't nothing read will Quran. Nothing, right. nothing will stop you. Does it make sense? Once you start. How can I know about the future without doing that full research? The future. I want to take travel when I have all my full research. Your research. Once you've read all of the Quran, then what? Maybe I will. Then it's like, let me learn Arabic. Then let me let me study these prophets. The fundamentals of Islam you don't disagree with. The five pillars. Yeah, the belief is there's one God. We worship only the Creator, not the creation. This is the fundamental. Okay? These are the basics. This is what you need for paradise. So what is? You're already a Muslim. Yeah? You know what the Shahada is? Let me tell you the Shahada. Ashadu. Allah ilaha wa shadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul means a bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and a bear witness that the messenger the prophet muhammad is the messenger sent by Allah the messenger of God, the messenger of Allah that testimony will get you the keys to paradise yeah. but you already have this belief you believe there's only one God. You believe the Quran is perfect. The Quran is perfect and it was real to the Prophet Muhammad. He must be the messenger of God. You researched into him and you researched and you found all of these people who tried to put you off Islam and the best thing they could come with was at one point. Does it make sense? And still you're here having this conversation with me. So I'm saying to you, what's stopping you? I'm saying in Arabic what you saying in Arabic what you believe in your heart. Because you don't need to become Muslim, you're already a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. But you just don't have the testimony. Yes, yes. You're right. <laughs> so I'm asking you my dear brother, what's stopping you from saying the Shahada, saying in Arabic what you already believe and then we can go and pray Asr together. <laughs> or you can pray Asr when you get home and so on and so forth. So, no, nothing is possible. Huh? Nothing. So, are you ready to repeat after me my brother? Yes. Yeah? Are you ready? Yes. Alright? I'm ready. Alhamdulillah. Alright. Say Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa shabu. Wa shabu. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa Rasul. Wa Rasul. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no deity. That there is no deity. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. I bear witness. That the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad. Is a messenger sent by Allah. Is a messenger sent by Allah. Brother, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. You've just become a Muslim. Yeah. You've got the keys to paradise. Yeah. All of your past sins are white. Yeah. Right now, um, you've got a clean sheet of deeds. So basically, there is all your past sins are gone, and you're starting afresh. How do you feel? Yeah. What's this feeling in your heart? Tell me. I feel light. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you feel light. Yeah. People tell me that once they become Muslim, the world's changed. I didn't want to say this to you before. Yeah. Like they're seeing different colours, just a different feeling in the heart. They feel light, they feel like free. Yeah. It's like before I was feeling heavy and now I'm uh, how can I say it? Light, 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 light. Now 
Um, I'm going to give you a translation of the Quran. Um, I'm going to give you my contact details. Um, we're going to continue this conversation. Um, next time you come to the UK, yes. we're going to spend some time together. Um, but yeah, the fact of the matter is rubber. What I want to do now is my brother. My brother, yeah. Like, what I want you to do now is the do as much of Islam as you can. Look into it practically. Read that Quran ten pages yes. a day. Yeah. You're not going to disagree with any of it. And while you're doing this, gain more knowledge. And when you're ready, have that conversation with friends and family. You don't need to have that conversation now. Yeah. Me myself, being born Muslim, you know when I started practicing, I used to pray five times a day. I'm like, wherever we're going, I can't go, I need to pray, I can't do this, we have to stop. My Muslim friends, they're like, brother, why do you need to pray? Just go home, pray all together. Sometimes Muslims are not the best. I had non-Muslim yeah, friends at the time who would remind me to pray. I do too, my Muslim friends. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yes. Can you imagine? They tell me, you're not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at you. See? That's why the Prophet said, you're upon the company, um, sorry, you're upon the religion of the company you keep. So, when you're around people who don't pray, you're not going to want to pray. When you're around people, who's too busy looking at girls, whistling at them, it's going to enter your heart. Alhamdulillah, I keep good company when people are there. I don't like it. When people talk to me about money, it's good. But find the balance. Talk to me about the hereafter as well. Don't, that's fine. I need to buy a new car. But how much of that conversation do you say about buying a new car? What's the balance? Tell me something about the hereafter. Does it make sense? Well, what's the point? I don't want people out. There's enough here to get us to run after the world. Does it make sense? Everything you switch on TV is telling you uh, buy this, spend money on that. You know what I mean? Worldly things, worldly things, worldly things. You go to work, worldly things, worldly things, worldly things. Worldly things. Okay. The last thing I'll do is get to my house and for family members to talk about it. Last thing I'll do is be out with my friends and have my large my bed um, have my friends talking about it. So I'll say be careful of the company you keep yeah? and the knowledge you take when someone says something it has to be from Quran and Sunni. But you're like, brother, I haven't even read the Quran. How do I know? Yeah. I read it. No, no, no. The thing is, it's not for you. No. When I say it's from the Quran, I'm not going to lie about it. Other people are going to lie about it. Tell you why. You can verify it. Yeah, because I've had people, they're like, oh, how do I know? I'm like, look, be warned of people who be like, oh, I saw in a dream a pious person. I don't care about pious person. The ultimate pious person, I want to follow him, the Prophet Muhammad. What did the Prophet Muhammad say? What does the Quran say? So when a scholar, you listen to anyone, and I think even Dr. Nak Zakir Nak says it, yeah? he goes, you've got one person who says one thing, yeah? and you ask somebody else, and he says something, and he says, it says this in the Quran, it says this in the Hadith, who are you going to follow? The second person, he gives the reference. Yeah? Exactly. So whenever you follow um, scholars, make sure that they're quoting reference Quran or Hadith. Yeah? Now, um, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm, I want to catch the Salah. I want to say to you, what, what do you want to say? Because everyone will be like, yeah. They want to hear the final words from the Italian Muslim. <laughs> I don't know, I'm so happy that uh, I took Shahada now. It was like a first thing to wait, wait, wait. And, uh, just like you said, you will have always, always a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I feel more... Uh, I will study, of course. Yeah, yeah. I will read all Quran, but I'm happy that I took today. <laughs> I'm just happy Now I don't have the spot to die. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you cross the road, you don't even need to look. <laughs> and once I tell the brothers, they're all going to be envious of you, right? Um, in fact, let me tell the brothers, brothers, Shahada! 